So in the previous section, we saw what happens when you change when you impose taxes, you change the actual supply function. It goes from one line up to another line. And then that actually changes the prices that appear in the market and the quantities and it changes how much is supplied and what it costs to supply it. Um, that's one specific instance of changes in supply and demand. That's because of a tax. But often you'll see changes in prices um, or in the structures of, of costs for firms or in demand just because, not because of taxes, just because of other things that happen in the world. And so if you look at this graph right here, um, we have this red line here that's some demand curve. And then for whatever reason, we're out at a new demand curve at this orange line here. Um, where there's been some sort of change in demand. And because of that, the price has gone up from $8 to $10. And now there's more being sold. We used to be selling 24 books. Now we're selling 31-ish books. So something happened to change the demand for books. And there's a whole host of reasons why you would see a change in demand. Um, and so when you see um, this type of structural change, um, what we call it is a change in demand. And what this means is that the demand for a good is different at every possible point in the line. Like you're at a whole new line. The thing shifted up or shifted down. Um, this generally represents a structural change um, where either preferences have changed, um, people don't like something anymore, or they like something a lot now. Um, and so that changes the whole structure of demand. Um, the price increases and the quantity increases generally at the same time, or the price decreases um, and the quantity decreases. Um, so a tax is generally seen as like a structural change because it changes the whole system of the market. And so when you tax, the price and the quantity both change at the same time. Um, and it's a structural change. Supply will generally remain the same if you're just targeting demand here. So an example of this, kind of a, a classic example is like, People, for whatever reason, start preferring hamburgers over pizza. And so the, the demand for hamburgers goes up. Um, and so more people are going to start purchasing hamburgers, which means the hamburger suppliers can start charging higher prices and they can start making more um, because the demand is higher and there's been a structural change there. Um, we see this right now all the time. Like there's there's this um, common story that you see in the news of like millennials destroy chilies or millennials destroy or killing applebees and because what people are finding is that millennials um, are not going to applebees as much as their parents and they're not um, buying houses as much as their parents and they're not having uh, as many kids as their parents um, because there are structural changes in society, it's really expensive to have kids. It's really incredibly expensive to buy houses now. Um, and so most millennials don't buy houses. Um, changes in taste, like who wants to really go to Chili's or Applebee's? That's like, I am not a fan of those. I'm a classic millennial here. It's better to go to like a, a fancy local restaurant. Um, avocado toast, like we love avocados. And so the whole market for avocados is different than it was 20 years ago. Um, because this like demand for avocados has changed and it's become um, higher. People want more avocados. So all of these things represent actual changes in demand. Um, you can also have changes in quantity um, that aren't based on any structural change. It's not because taxes increase or because millennials are buying fewer houses or anything like that. It's because the quantity just changes. And so you might see the prices and quantity of something change out in the world, but it's not because of any structural thing. It's just because you're moving along the existing demand curve. And so an example of this is like the price of pizza changes. Um, pizza Hut decides to um, have a coupon week. And so the price changes, but that's not because there's any structural change. There hasn't been a change in demand um, or anything like that. It's just the price has changed. So to look at this graphically, um, here's, again, here's our demand curve. And here's a potential new demand curve. So if you look out the window and you say yesterday, 24 books were being sold, and now 30 books are being sold. And that's all you see it was more books are being sold now out in the world. That is for that could be because of two different reasons. Um, there are two ways to get from that 24 to either to 31 there. One way is because you move from point A to point C. So that means there are more books being sold and the price is cheaper. 
Um, and so maybe there's a, a sale on books or something, or um, it, books are just generally cheaper, the price changed for whatever reason, and so more people are buying them. It's not because there's a higher demand for it, it's just people are, are, are buying more because the price went down. And so in that situation, this is an example of a change in quantity demanded. It's not an actual change in quantity, it's not a change in demand, it's not any structural change, it's just people are responding to different prices. Um, and the prices got lower, and so they're buying more stuff. Um, so that is change in quantity demanded. From the other side, though, it could be that there are more books being sold um, here at 31, and the price is higher. If that happens, that's a good sign that there was actually a structural change, where more people actually want the books, and there's a higher demand for it. And so because of that, the booksellers can raise the price, and more people are going to buy it. And so something happened in the market to change that demand. And so that is this change in demand. So there's this difference between change in quantity demanded, which just means you're moving along the existing demand curve, prices go up and down and quantity changes, or a change in demand, which is a whole new demand curve, something structural changed. Um, so there are different causes for this. If there's a change in complementary goods, um, if, for instance, the market for ketchup um, if mustard gets it cheaper, then people are probably going to buy more ketchup as well because those go together. Those are complementary goods. Um, if socks get cheaper, then maybe shoes will also get cheaper because those are also complementary goods. Um, and so that is kind of one cause for a change in demand. You can also, if there's a change in price of substitute goods, um, that can also change a structural or make a structural change in demand. So a substitute good is kind of the opposite of, of a complementary good. It's something that you can just replace. So um, for instance, if one brand of um, barbecue sauce doubles in price for some reason, um, then um, kind of the other brands of barbecue sauce will change in their demand. And there might be more demand for kind of store, store brand barbecue sauce than name brand because um, those are substitutes, this name brand barbecue sauce and the store bar barbecue sauce. Um, and so because one thing changes, it actually causes a structural change in the, in the demand for something else. Um, you can also have a change in population of buyers. Um, this is where like buyers might get older or might just have different preferences. This is the idea of, of millennials killing Applebee's. Um, millennials are not going to Applebee's because there's been a change in the population of buyers and change in preferences. Um, millennials don't like going to Applebee's um, for whatever reason. And so because of that, the whole population of buyers is different. And so that's a new chain, that's a whole new demand curve. Um, change in income is the same idea. Um, this is the market for houses. Millennials are not buying houses as much because we are poorer than our parents' generations um, because we, we've gone through two recessions now and it's bad. So um, because of that, there's just a whole new demand for houses that hasn't existed um, or just change in preferences where um, people like different things and so you get a brand new demand curve. So some examples of this here. Um, what we have are some different real world or imagined things that you might see and then represent they represent different things here. So in this orange market, if Dr. Oz decides to promote some new fad diet where he says everybody needs to eat 10 oranges a day um, and suddenly lots of people are buying new oranges, this is an example of a change in demand. It's a brand new demand curve because preferences have changed. So more people want to buy stuff it's a new structural change. It changes the whole demand for oranges countrywide. Everybody wants it. Um, with a car market, if a consumer income rises, that is also a change in demand. Um, as we saw here, change in income, um, that's because people can buy more stuff. And so you're moving from one level of demand to another. Like people are more willing to pay or willing to pay more for things because they have more money for it. Um, in a car market, if gas prices double, gas is a complementary good for a car. And so if the oil market changes, and so now gas is really expensive, um, that's going to change the overall demand for cars themselves. And so that is also a change in, quant er, a change in demand itself. You're in a brand new demand curve. You're not just moving around the existing demand curve. In a shoe market, 
if you have more manufacturers that just appear in the, the shoe market, that's not going to be a brand new structural change. That's not um, like some new shoe was invented or somebody's promoting shoes or anything like that. That's just moving along the existing demand. Nothing changed with demand. It's just gonna be a little bit cheaper now because there are more people creating stuff. Um, and so that is not a structural change. It's not a change in demand. It's just a change in quantity demanded. Um, same thing with this lettuce market here. If the price of lettuce drops by 10 cents because um, Kroger decides to have a sale or because of whatever reason, um, that's not going to change the overall demand for it. That hasn't changed preferences. That hasn't. It's not because of income changes. It's not because of any other thing. It's just because the price changes. And so there will be a change in quantity, but it's just a change in quantity. It's not a whole new demand curve. Okay. The same thing happens from the supply side as well, um, where you might have an original supply curve here with some price, and then there's some sort of change that makes you go to a higher price and a lower supply, or it could go the other way. This line could also go right here, and then you'll have a higher price and a lower quantity. It can go either way. Um, so in this situation, this is similar um, to the, the change in demand here. So a change in supply is also a, a structural change. The supply is higher or lower at every possible point. The whole thing moves. Um, it represents a structural change. Um, and as we saw with demand, if the price goes up, then the quantity goes up, or if price goes down, quantity goes down. And demand generally remains the same. We just talk about this in, in individual stages, like supply changes or demand changes, but they don't really do it simultaneously. Um, so a good example of this is this example here, the cost of production changes because technology makes it faster to make stuff. Um, there's some sort of new factory that can create stuff faster. Um, and so that changes the whole, the whole cost structure of all of these different firms and makes it so they can sell stuff cheaper. And that changes the actual supply curve. Um, you also have the same principle that we were talking about with demand. You can just have a change in quantity supplied, um, where the prices and quantity change, but it's not because of any structural issues. It's just because you're moving along the existing supply curve. Um, and that could just be, again, the price of a product changes. Somebody has a coupon for something. Um, it's slightly cheaper, and so they can buy more of it. That's not any structural change. That's just you're moving a little bit along the line. So if we look back at this graph here, Let's say yesterday you were seeing that 24 books were being sold for $8. You wake up in the morning and you see that only 17-ish books are being sold now. And that is for two possible reasons. It could be that um, the price for books just dropped for whatever reason. Um, um, consumers have a whole bunch of coupons for it. They've, they've saved up with gift cards or something. And so now um, they can buy books for cheaper. And so that means the price is going to go down a little bit, but you're moving along this existing curve here. So you're just moving from A to C. And so the quantity will go down um, and the price will also go down. You could also look out the window and see that there are fewer books being sold, but they're more expensive. Um, and that would represent a new supply curve entirely. That's a more structural change. So that means you're moving from A to B here. Um, where there's fewer books being sold and it is more expensive. Um, if we went the other way, like if there's a new factory that was invented um, or some new machine that creates stuff, then suddenly you're able to make more books and make them cheaper. And that's a whole new supply curve. Um, and so that's kind of this more structural change. So some different causes of shifting supply, kind of like we had with shifting demand. Um, if the cost of inputs changes, then that changes the whole structure of the supply curve and it moves you to a different supply curve. Um, the change in cost of production, again, the whole um, supply curve itself comes from average costs and fixed costs and marginal costs and all of the costs of the firm. So if any of those costs change, then that's going to get you onto a new supply function or a new supply curve. Um, changes in weather can cause shifting supply. Um, if you're a farmer and there's a hurricane and it destroys your crop, that's a huge problem with your supply. Um, and that will hurt your actual supply function there. The change in number of suppliers, if new 
um, manufacturers into a, enter into a market, that will actually change the whole structure of the market. Because again, the supply curve that is going up like that, that is everybody, like all of the different suppliers, all of their different costs added up and creating a, a whole new um, line. So if you double the amount of suppliers, for instance, that's actually going to get you a brand new line because you have to add all of their costs together. And so that's going to be a change in, in supply. Or if consumers expect lower prices for something, um, that's also going to, to be a structural change in your supply. And you have to um, be on a new supply curve because they're only going to buy something for cheaper or more expensive. Um, so some examples here. In a car market, if a new engine design reduces the production costs of something, this is going to be a change in supply. You're going to be on a brand new supply curve because um, the input costs and the production costs change. In an orange market, if there's a freeze in Florida that kills 50% or 50 of the crop, that's going to be a structural change to the whole supply curve. Um, and it's going to be a brand new supply curve and that's going to be bad and prices are going to be more expensive and there's going to be fewer oranges. And so that's going to be a change in supply. Um, with the shoe market here, if the price of shoes just increases because it does, that's not any structural change. That's not being on a new supply curve. That's just moving along the existing supply curve. And so that's a change in quantity supplied. This last one here though, if the price of leather increases, that's one of the inputs. And so that means you're gonna be at a new structural, uh, a change in the structure of, of, of your supply. And so that creates a brand new supply curve, which is a change in supply. And so that's, that's kind of the distinction here um, between change in quantity supplied and change in supply itself. Um, and so in econ textbooks in, in normal like undergrad classes, you have a whole bunch of problem set questions where it gives examples like this and says, identify if this is a change in supply or a change in quantity supplied. I don't care so much about that. Um, I won't give you test questions about this or anything. Um, it's just good to know so you can talk to economists when they talk about a change in supply or a change in quantity supplied, things like that. That's all that you really need to know is just like when there are structural changes, that's going to be a change in overall demand or overall supply. If there's just changes in prices, um, that's just going to be moving along the line um, and it's not going to be any sort of structural change. So that's all you really need to know for this.